Hey, how's it going, duty solvers? Today we're going to talk about whether it's possible to have a drive belt like this or a serpentine belt last a million miles or practically forever by simply treating them before we install them on the car. And I have to say that the reason I'm doing this video was because a viewer asked me uh, if it was possible to have these belts last a long time by simply treating them with some type of a rubber protectant uh, before installing it. And the reason he was asking me this was because he had seen it claimed in a couple of videos on YouTube. So I decided to look into this on my own and give you my take on it. All right, so the procedure in these videos goes something like this. You grab yourself a clean bucket or uh, any plastic container. Next, you grab your drive belt or serpentine belt and put it at the bottom of your container. So next, you would get yourself some uh, rubber protectant and it would have to be a good brand rubber protectant and not a bad brand because that wouldn't work. Or even some armor all will work as one suggested. And next you simply start pouring in your rubber protectant. Also very important that you want to make sure that your drive belt is completely submerged in the rubber protectant. So next what you want to do is to let this sit for a few hours so that this rubber protectant has time to soak into this drive belt and therefore provide maximum protection. All right, so it's been a few hours, so next you're supposed to get yourself some uh, rags or paper towels, remove your dry belts from the container, and try to completely dry it off. And after we do this, we can go install this back on our engine ourselves, or you know, give it to our mechanic, they can put it on the engine. And now this is supposed to last pretty much forever, hundreds of thousands of miles, or while we add it, let's just say a million miles. Also in the set of videos, it is mentioned that this procedure is especially helpful since these drive belts or serpentine belts are pricey. Or that replacing one of these drive belts or serpentine belts requires a lot of time and therefore labor. All right, let's start debunking this crap from up top. So an overwhelming majority of cars replacing your serpentine belts is very easy. All you have to do is to get a wrench, put it on your tensioner, turn it clockwise in this case, and there you can see you get a lot of slack there where you can take this belt off and then putting it back on is simply the reversal of this. If it's your first time doing this, it'll probably take you 15 minutes. If it's your second time doing this, it'll probably take you five minutes. More or less, same goes for replacing your drive belts most of the time. As they drive your accessories, they're usually up front and somewhat accessible. And it's simply a matter of finding the tensioner for these. There's usually two bolts for the tensioners for these drive belts instead of one bolt. So you might have a little harder time, but still, you should be able to replace these under 20, 30 minutes. As far as pricing goes, well, the smaller drive belts are fairly cheap. They're under 20 bucks usually. Now the larger serpentine belts might be a little bit more expensive, but usually by not a whole lot. Now you gotta keep in mind when calculating costs, you gotta take into account the cost for the rubber protectant, since we're going to assume you don't have some on hand. Now, as far as whether this procedure works in helping to preserve your drive belts or serpentine belts for hundreds of thousands of miles, the answer is no, as in hell no, AKA no. Just think of it this way. How long does armor all last on the sidewalls of your tires? And the sidewalls of your tires, if you know how to park, don't even come into contact with anything, unlike our drive belts and serpentine belts. Well, all the time, they're going around your different uh, pulleys on your accessories and rollers. If this procedure worked, tire companies would dip their tires in some rubber protectant and then advertise them as forever tires. See, much like the surface of the tire, your belt or the groove side of your belt comes into contact with all the different pulleys. And as you're driving down the road, your engine does thousands of RPM, as in revolutions per minute, which means this belt is going around all the different pulleys under tension by our belt tensioner a lot of times really fast. Now it's true that these dry belts will wear out and start slipping either due to them uh, drying out or expanding over time long before they actually break. But even under best case scenario, simply dipping these into some rubber protectant and then putting them back on your engine will only last, I would say probably under 100 miles. Because again, the V inside of your different pulleys are always or constantly chipping away at your dry belt. Also, as you can see on this bottle of belt conditioner, the rubber protectants or these belt conditioner itself will add traction to your belts. Now that's good if you already have a worn belt that's slipping and this will add traction to it and stop it from slipping temporarily. Temporarily as in you have to spray this on your belts every day or maybe every other day before you go to work, you have to go get in your car, pop the hood, go get your bottle of uh, belt conditioner, spray it on your belt, that will hopefully stop the noise for your commute to work and back. And then you do this all over 
the next day or the day after where it starts making noise again. Yeah, all those dumb engineers at the dry belt manufacturing companies couldn't figure out rubber protectant. What I would do is have exactly two of the same belts, sell one for 10 bucks, dip the other in some rubber protectant and offer this with lifetime warranty and sell it for 20 bucks. Then people will pay for it. Right there, you probably triple your profit per belt since each belt doesn't actually cost 10 bucks. It costs, let's say five bucks for the manufacturer, but they sell it at 10 bucks, so at 20. Yeah, you make, you tripled your profits. Also not to mention, every time you spray belt conditioner or put your dry belts into some rubber protectant, you make it a little tacky like we talked about, which stops the slipping, but you also run the risk of swelling the rib surface of your belts. And when that happens, especially after the belt conditioner flashes off or wears out, as these grip the grooves inside your pulleys more, they wear out even faster. Oh, and under no circumstance should you put any rubber protectant or belt conditioner on your timing belt, which is what I have here. Because if your dry belt or serpentine belt wears out prematurely and breaks, you would simply lose the use of the accessories that was driven off of that belt, like the power steering pump or your alternator. But if your timing belt wears out prematurely and snaps in half, your engine will lose its ability to time the opening and closing of your valves, which are on inside your cylinder heads, with the up and down movement of your pistons. Basically, your valves will probably stay open, then when your pistons come up and hit them, they'll bend them or maybe break them. And if that happens, you're going to either rebuild the top end of your engine or simply get a different engine. Now, if the serpentine belts or the dry belts on your vehicle are making noise before you go and replace the belt, or if you decide to do so as a temporary fix just to stop the noise, put some belt conditioner on them, uh, you want to make sure it's actually the belt that's causing the noise, not your tensioner or other bearings inside the pulleys for your different accessories. And in order to be able to pinpoint this, here's some footage from a video I did not too long ago showing you exactly how you can pinpoint the belt noise that might be coming from your car's engine. All right, so when we're diagnosing belt noise issues, the first thing I do is to take a close look at the belt and I look and make sure that the belt is nice and dry and that it's not contaminated with any other type of fluid. Because if you have a leak from a water pump or power steering pump, which is back there on this car, uh, those leaks, when they get on the belt, they can make for a very noisy belt. Next, it's time to find out whether our belt noise is due to not enough tension or too much tension on our drive belt, or whether it's due to an alignment issue between the pulleys, either due to a bad bearing or damage to one of these pulleys. So next, you want to grab yourself a spray bottle and fill it up with water. Next, with the engine running, you want to spray the belt with some water. And if the noise goes up, you have a tension issue. But if the noise goes away and comes back or no goes away for a while and then starts to come back slowly, then you more than likely have an alignment issue. So if you have tension issues, the first thing you should check is the condition of the belt. Because a worn belt can stretch over time and then start slipping off these pulleys, causing you to hear that screeching noise from your engine. And as you can see, the condition of this belt is in really good condition. That's only because I replaced this a few days ago. So the next culprit is the tensioning mechanism on this belt. Now on this car, the tensioning mechanism is adjustable. Here's our lucky nut for our tensioner, and here's our tensioning bolt. As we unscrew this, we apply less tension, and as we tighten this, we apply more tension to this belt. But that's not always the case. See, most cars these days come with a tensioner like this. This is spring-loaded, and it's continuously applying tension to your drive belt or serpentine belt. Now what happens is over time the spring inside here loses its power, causing it to not be able to apply enough tension to your belt, therefore causing you to hear that belt noise. All right, so back to the car. Since on this car we verified that our belt is new, so therefore what's left is the tension that's applied to this belt. And as you can see, this belt is way too loose, but I only did this on purpose uh, so I can demonstrate this for you guys. But now I'm just gonna apply some tension to this belt by this uh, adjusting bolt and then start the car so you guys can see that it fixed our problem. All right, I should do it. All right, great, but what if you sprayed water on the belt and the noise went away and then started to come back slowly? All right, so if that's the case then, that's due to an alignment issue. And an alignment issue is caused by either a bad bearing inside one of these pulleys or a bad or damaged pulley itself. All right, so on this belt, for example, this belt is running off our harmonic balancer, which is back there. This is our air compressor, and here's our alternator. Now, if you look down on this belt exactly, this belt should be going around these three different pulleys exactly straight. 
one of these pulleys should not be out a little bit more than one of the other ones because then that would cause it uh, this belt to wobble causing you to hear that noise. So first thing you want to do is to do a close visual inspection of all the pulleys running off that uh, drive belt and look for obvious signs of damage to the pulley uh, similar to what we see here. Something else you can do is to use a straight edge or a ruler and put it on one pulley and then run across all the other pulleys and see whether one pulley is further out or in than the other ones. As you can see, there's no such space in here to do that. But the next step after that is to simply remove the drive belt and check each pulley for signs of play or damage. All right, so after you remove your belt, you wanna go around and spin each pulley and make sure there's no excessive noise. There's nothing funny that stands out. But not just that, you also wanna grab them and wobble each pulley back and forth. There should be almost no movement. But as you can see, there is some movement in this pulley and that's because there are bearings inside of these pulleys. See this little bearing? This is what I'm talking about. When these go bad, a lot of times they allow for extra play, causing this pulley to wobble, therefore causing you to hear that belt noise. And on a lot of V6 and V8 engines, you'll also have an idler pulley for your serpentine belt. And if you do find out that your belt noise is due to an alignment issue, your problem is usually solved between replacing one of these two. So there you have it, that's how you can pinpoint where the noise is coming from so that you don't have to go throw parts at your car and waste time and money. And as we mentioned earlier, putting a belt conditioner or rubber protectant on your drive belt or serpentine belt at best has a negligible benefit in regards to the belt's life expectancy, but at worst it's quite possible that it will cause your belt to wear out prematurely and if you put it on your timing belt, that will cause catastrophic engine failure. So in your words, don't do it. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to my channel. But more importantly, check out these other related videos, of which I put links to on this side of the screen for you to check out. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.